Okay, so today we're going to work on this. This is a trailer. It's not the lightest of trailers either. <sighs> This is a Harbor Freight trailer. I picked it up with a coupon for $189. Okay, so that is what makes up a trailer. But for the screws, I've got my little magnetic tray. And this thing's like the best. Don't worry really about too much stuff running off or nothing. Okay, let's get everything generically sorted. Okay, I'll we'll just put those off to the side. There. <clears throat> now we can get working. This is the front. Gonna be a side. Let's see, I guess I want that side to be. It might be on the outside of here. Mm. One in the back. The notches on the upside. So these here, which means this one here. And we'll let that, that goes in the middle of them now. So it looks like these here. Right in like that. Which it looks like they do. So we'll just lay them in place here real quick. Now the center one, I've actually got going the wrong way, I guess. So it looks like this isn't the center one. But that's going to be my hitch. So that's where this one comes into play. And it's going to go this way. Okay, so there's our center one.
Oh, there's the start. Okay, so we're going to pick this up. I can't lean it necessarily because then my bolts here will come out. But I've already lost one of them. that and put it that way. Should hold okay. Now let's take a decision on one of these. I already got a nut. Let's try doing the hardest pain in the butt one first. My deal is I like the hand everything first. There's not a way to do two here, even though it showed like two on everywhere else. Okay, let's make sure the middle did not show putting two in there. So it must be pulling back here. That's the only way that makes sense to me. We're going to move that one back there for now. Hopefully we're not making a mistake. If so, that's what this is about. Okay, so let's get all that done. Okay, had an intermission because I filled my camera up. Sorry about that. Okay, so where were we? We were trying to figure out whether this was the right spot for that or not. That looks like this is gonna be wrong, so this is gonna have to come up here which means this here probably needs to come up this direction. Okay, so what we're doing here, what I think I figured out is we're backwards. Yep, we are. If we turn that sucker, that works good that way. Then I'll make this line up here, which it does. That I'll line up there, which it does. That's the difference, folks. Okay, so hence why we didn't bolt everything down originally either. Every one of y'all is on the on the line going, oh yeah, we knew. we saw that before you did, Chris. You'll notice I'm not totally tightening everything down, mainly because I want to, uh, hi Bobby. Yeah, mainly because I want to uh, make sure everything's gonna line up right. Which, uh, this far, let's be honest, this is me putting this together. Yeah. Keep in mind at all times, we are upside down right now as far as this trailer goes.
You want the bolt, by the way, to be facing the ground. Because let's say the washer falls off. If the bolt's on the bottom, the bolt falls off. Nothing holding it. The nut, the bolt itself can hold that in place sometimes. So you want the washer to be on the bottom, typically speaking. And this is the bottom of the trailer, by the way. That's going to be our rear. So it just kind of clips in there. <laughs> yeah, that makes you feel confident, doesn't it? One well, other thing worrying me is you'll notice that they have like bolts going this way with nuts on the bottom here. So like for this part here, the nuts would be on the bottom. But these parts, which is actually my axle, they're showing um, the bolts being on the inside, not the outside. And I'm going, uh -uh. I ain't assembling it that way. Although I might have to because of the spring part. Because like if my bolt, for example, sticks through too much, it's going to be poking at that far. So I might have to actually turn it around, which worries me on the spring part here. Because they're wanting me to go this way with it which I get admit would make it more flush but getting back to where I told you we lose a bolt we got a trouble that worries me the other thing I'm noticing is it is actually showing it going through the front bolt not the back bolt we'll change that around here real quick too means I've got to bolt this one in first. It's probably why they have a guard clip there. Is because otherwise you'd lose them both. Yeah, that's, that's what they are doing. Because that goes right over that. Which means we've got our full first bolt. We really honestly ought to bolt down real quick here. But I'm still trying to make sure everything's squared, which this is, like it or not, part of the squaring. Okay. Those go that way. Axle comes across. And that's where these springs go. Which is great. That way.
So we're going to stop right here, and this is where I want to start tightening everything up. I'm going to cut you all off. I'm going to actually go through and tighten everything up, and we'll take, pick it up after this. Uh, the whole time, by the way, I'm going to make sure I'm square as much as I can. It should get a uh, framer square. Keep everything square that way. And okay. Hey, we got a trailer. Kinda. Now, gotta do all the electronics on it still. At this part they already pre-assembled, so I didn't have to actually do that. Still gotta put the fenders on. But at this point we can take the trailer. Straight up over this way. And we have a functional trailer. Yeah. This direction. We go right into those two. Easy. Okay, so those will be no big deal. Okay, we're not straying in until we're done.
Hmm. There's another one in there. there. Make sure there's nothing, nothing special here, real quick. Okay, one of the parts that tripped me up here a little was this blinker right here. Okay, reason the blinker, uh, reason the blinker tripped me up was this right here. Okay, because they had these self-setting screws that they sent with it. To which case, I'm sitting here going, a little too big to fit in that hole. Why would they send a screw too big for the hole? So I thought about it. And then the other thing was, I was going, I'm going to need to put a washer or something, use a bolt system. I don't know why they wouldn't send that. The other thing is, that screw, when you put it on here, you'd notice, one, the wire spot, eh, two, the screw is way too big to fit in the hole. So I was like, why would they do that? So, what I did... Is I got to look in at it and had this little spot here. I thought that they provided basically for the uh, wiring to go through. Because you'll notice, like, if I actually straighten that wire, fits through just about perfect. And I'm all like, okay, so you get a little wiring thing, that, that, and then you go that way. Nope, I was wrong. Okay, so the little hole I thought was for the wire. That's where this goes through. And you go this way. So that it makes sense for it to go through the hole. Okay? So this goes in there. On this one in particular, the wire needs to go higher. And that bolt goes right into that hole. Which, by the way, it's still tight to get in there. But that's where that actually goes. That's why it's a self-tapping screw, not a normal screw. And that's why you don't have a bolt or anything either. So you just put a little torque into it, goes right in. On both, you have your blinker. Okay, mess up number two is these. Uh, remember me point, show you, I was uh, looking at uh, this part. No, it's on the bottom of this, this little part earlier where it's clear. Kind of wondering, hmm, does that matter? It does. Okay, reason why. Wiring, whenever I go to do the wiring. If I install these wrong, whenever I turn my right blinker on, my left blinker will work, or vice versa. And uh, not to mention, I want the brake lights to be proper too. And if you look at the back of the device here, it tells you, <laughs> stop, turn. So, top, yeah, screwed that up. Had I uh, paid attention to that, I'd have gotten it right the first time, not be reworking right now. Save myself time. Yeah, wiring wise this has been pretty easy you just run the wires to here uh, I've got a couple of these clips which I added some clips to I just you can see I ran it all in here along here I don't know where to that actually yeah there you go you can see I ran it all along here just kind of loose base nothing major I don't want any tension in there little clips these little clips like to slide off but uh you know, get, as I'm working on it, I keep pulling all the cables and such. So the wiring is going to go right back in here and attach right in here. Right through here. We'll just take it underneath here. I'm just going to wire that up. You'll see that pretty easy there. Uh, same thing along this side. Those clips are horrible. Yep, not a fan of these clips, by the way. But, eh. Uh, same thing there. The, uh, they don't give a good detail on where to ground it. It just says up in this area. So I was looking at it and I'm going to ground it right in here. Okay. 
Grounded down. Okay. Okay, got all the trailer put together now. Last thing I need to do basically is cotter pins. Okay, so I got it all together. The uh, last thing I need to do is these little pins here. These little safety pins. Which are pretty easy to deal with. You just kind of stick one in. We're just going to go off different directions with it. Try to make it as flush as possible. I'm going to take at it about as flush as I can get it. I like to take a little hammer out and kind of flatten it down. That's flush. That's pretty much okay, it. Okay, trailer's we're done, so we're gonna move the sucker into the backyard. I'll also give you all an idea how light this thing is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a yeah, lean-to for this thing to go under. I'm going to take it right off the shed. But it'll come right in there. And that's the trailer. Not a bad little trailer either, so, you know. We'll go get it certified, get the license for it.